You are weak. Weak minds crave domination. Impossible! No man, Bokoro not, is more powerful than you. My children will dance to the music of your screams! In the pipe, 5x5. Five five. Wow! We're actually blind! Can you believe it? I sense a soul in search of answers. Is that even possible? I don't know, but if anyone can figure it out, Brainiac can. Welcome to the VO Life and Gravy for the Brain Oceania podcast. It is my spectacular privilege to uh, introduce my next guest uh, on VO Life today. Um, I've followed this lady for many years. Um, I run a voice academy and I always make a point to show this particular video to my students, um, which is um, her going through like a monologue, a kind of a, a routine of all her different character voices. And I've always wanted to be in touch and ask her about the craft. And finally, it's my opportunity. So it's my great pleasure to introduce Lani Manel to the VO Life podcast. Hi, Lani. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. I never knew that. That's the first time I've heard that. But yes. So thank you very much. <laughs> no problem at all. So tell us just a little bit about your voice career. How long have you been in this business? Oh, since the dinosaurs. Uh, <laughs> I've been probably, I started in the game industry in 92. But I went through, I mean, I'm ancient. So I did all that in kind of the radio business years before that. And so I started doing imitations on radio. And people heard that, started saying, we need you to do Fern Gully movie voices and to pitch the laser disc way back then. Wow. And then they had someone downstairs doing CD-ROM. I didn't even know what a CD-ROM was. And they said, go downstairs and talk to our children's department. Went, okay. And I asked them, who else does this? And that was the beginning. You know, mm. So that's how it all got started. It was basically radio. And that was decades ago gosh that's amazing um you'd sent through like your your kind of resume and um, i was looking at the, the front page and thinking wow that's pretty impressive and then i realized there were 13 more pages of video games <laughs> like literally oh, scrolling and scrolling it, <laughs> it could be more quantity than quality <laughs> you know what i mean but i try to put as much as i can because imdb doesn't you know yeah, put a lot of absolutely yeah yeah it sort of struggles with the video game section doesn't it so you you are um, like primarily a voice talent but you also do casting and you also do direction and session is that right right Mm -hmm. mm. Definitely. And I what's your with, uh, what's your favorite? Is your favorite to do the voiceover stuff, or do you enjoy all three? I enjoy all three, and the main thing is I um, I still would say that coming up, if I'm doing voices, the most exciting thing is to come up and conjure up new things, new alien languages, uh, new things that I don't expect. For example, when I was called up to do the monster voices for it chapter two i had no idea what i was up there for showing up on the warner brothers lot it's intimidating enough trying to know where you're going and get passes and doing all that stuff and then to be shown okay here's what we're doing and we want you to watch the little line going across and go uh, okay that i think is really nice and that's the fun part is when you get a challenge like that and can make up things on your own um but directing is fine too i really enjoy working with people and casting like i i think you've had other people that you've interviewed before is a it's a it's an interesting thing but when i do casting i tend to not make people audition i don't generally go through agents because it's always last minute here's the stuff we need it in two days from now. So I just kind of, I don't typecast people, but I will kind of assign, and that's what makes it a challenge to a lot of voice talents, because we have to come up with voices on the fly, in the session, and be able to, you know, act. Mm, mm, absolutely. So when was the first time that you were, that you discovered that you had this sort of knack for being able to just come up with, you know, voices that were, were not your own? Probably ever since I was a little kid and had no friends. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would make fun of teachers in, in school and imitate them and get in trouble and uh, be the class clown to make people laugh. So that would be my approval. You know what I mean? So, mm. the, and telling jokes and things of that nature. So, probably from the time I was a little kid, I just was imitating things that I would see on TV and 
luckily I'd be by myself so I wouldn't embarrass myself. <laughs> Fair enough. And it's one thing to to be the sort of the, the, the person at the party with uh, with all of the, the voice tricks. But I mean, I've discovered as a coach, like you get a lot of people that, 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 that sort of come on courses and say, I'm great at doing voices, but then you put them behind a mic or in a situation where it's like, no, I don't want that, but I want you know something slightly different. And they kind of, they can't deal with that. So it's a, it's an entirely different skill set to be able to, 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 to make that work for you commercially. When was the sort of when did you re- sort of when was the first time you were paid to be behind the mic doing this? Gosh, you expect me to remember that, Barbara. I think it would probably be. Um, hmm, I'm trying to remember, but it wouldn't have been games. It might have been in radio, mm. you know, because I was at radio stations as well, doing mm. production and things of that nature. But you're absolutely right. Uh, being on mic, people can freeze up. And even if you see some of the YouTube videos of the celebrities that are in Pixar or something doing their stuff, they're standing there with like a pencil. And we all know that in order to get action, you should move your whole body and do gestures and be big. And when you're taught to do on-camera work, they say, don't do that. Too much Jim Carrey exaggeration. You're going to look really exaggerated. But it's just the opposite. So being on mic, like I said, sometimes I've worked, I've auditioned for agents and I would ask them, okay, where do I plug the mic, the headphones in? They'd say, oh, we were getting feedback earlier. And I'd say, why? Because Mary Matlin was in the studio and she couldn't hear you. Yeah, okay, door flies open. And they said, <clears throat> it's a custom of this, I won't name the agency, not to put the headphones on the talent because sometimes it scares them to hear their voice in their ear. <laughs> I'm like, okay, you know, so this is a whole other field where I think people don't realize, they all think it'll be fun. You've heard that before. I think it'd be mm-hmm. fun to do voiceovers. I can do really like do them all well. I can do this and that. And it is better than digging ditches. It's a lot more in- interesting and it, it does bring out a lot more creativity, but you have to be in voice control. And that's the thing. You're controlling your voice enables you then when someone says like you said can you make it a little older can you make it a little less accent can you pull it back you know you have to then be able to adjust on the fly and if you don't have the voice control and we all never know what's going to exactly come out when somebody says can you do you know just make up something do it and you don't know if they want to let's say rosie perez and you've never done rosie perez before and you have to say i don't know that she sound kind of like this you know i mean whatever you have to be able to kind of not be embarrassed and the trick too is that the more you move the more people who are actually watching you are impressed Mm. wow that person knows what they're doing instead of standing there looking all nervous in the fig leaf position or your hands in your pockets or you know things Mm. of that nature so yeah yeah, i think that being on the mic can intimidate some people but that's part of being on voiceover so not only do you have to be an engineer nowadays because you have to record at home but you also have to be able to uh bend with the wind and oftentimes if you have a bad director the trick is if they say i'll know it when i hear it you just ask them the question would you like it in a texture older voice then they still say they know when they hear it you you just heard it you know (laughs) so yeah there's there's little tricks but to know the trade and know the terminology Mm -hmm. you know like if you're saying um p-pops you got to know what that means Mm -hmm. so i think it's all a matter of of You have to be more than just a person that reads, as you well know, and I'm sure you train people too, is that when people say, I've heard the coaching philosophy of just be yourself. When you have to be different characters in a game, uh, I would say you should adjust as that self is that character, not necessarily that you're being Lonnie doing an orc. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If I want to do an orc, I'm not acting like myself. Who acts like that? You know what I mean? Myself. So I'm thinking that you can do that. You can kind of add yourself. But that whole philosophy of find your motivation, your subtext, and all that kind of stuff kind of can be modified a bit Mm -hmm. to say that you have to bring acting as though you're watching yourself on a screen on your forehead and you're playing that role, being that role, but being your quote unquote self doesn't that confuse you a little bit? That's yeah, absolutely. Like I, I, I often see people um, who, who come on my courses that it's like they they know the character they want to do and inside they've committed maybe 
50 percent because they're like oh, i don't want to go too far because i'll look silly and it's like <laughs> that's the that's the point of this game is to is to go beyond what anyone else right. will like that's when yeah. you get real success is like is not by doing a voice but by becoming that voice like literally feeling like right. you're inside that skin which i'm sure you'd agree with yeah well and plus in games they don't write enough lines to give you just one part mm. you have to play multiple roles because they could bring back some repeat character from six years ago with two lines. So they get, they end up getting all the little bitsy parts that are left over that might be new, you know? So you do have to be able to sound different and still not, uh, we don't expect a man to be Mickey Mouse in falsetto. You know, most women do teenage boy voices, but most games don't have a lot of kids unless you're doing a kid's game, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of deal. So when you're talking about role play games and massive multiplayer online role play games, those would be the more adult, things and for women especially you don't really ever have parts that are written for like the encino check too much like oh my god um it's usually heavy duty warriors you know so women are to be a little bit masculine sometimes or if they're going to be a fighter you don't want someone thinking they're going to be destroyed on the first swipe Mm. so your voice has to indicate a toughness it's very true isn't it yeah And and games do tend towards like I guess a kind of a more violent or at least a very kind of gritty kind of nature. Like they're, 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 it's, not, it's often it was towards darkness rather than light. Am I right? <laughs> and even the angels may not sound, you know, like they're that angelic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because everyone's always in a fight. You're yeah. always trying to beat somebody. And when you have an end boss, like in a Blizzard game or something, I suppose I'm, you have a million people all on your screen, with little icons, all throwing their spells and doing whatever it is at this monster. Mm. Uh, it's difficult to make out the speech. It's usually just a cacophony of things going out there. So when you have emotes where you're dying and you're attacking or being attacked, what have you, it all becomes a big mess. Mm. It's not usually that it's distinguishable between mm. that. And um, I think I love being in bosses. I think that's really a, a joy, mm. especially though uh, you have to realize that Again, I, when I was called to be the clicker for Last of Us 2, and I was the infected on the first game, and the clicker, they just said, oh, they communicate by clicking. Go. And you were watching an avatar on screen of, oh, this monster running down, smacking against walls, doing all kinds of weird things, and going in agony and doing all this stuff. Well, there's two ways of clicking. You can ah, let it out like a screen door. Ah, or <clears throat> things like do this. Ah, then when you're breathing in, you know, you can do that kind of a thing. But you never know what's going to come out of your mouth. Mm. So just the whole ability of trying Mm. and showing that you're willing to look like an idiot is, I think, very much appreciated in the Mm. industry you know what i mean and people who have a good attitude and don't say don't tell me how to say it don't give me a line read that's kind of you were bringing up before uh, things that we directors don't really like to hear Mm. i mean it's fine i just sometimes they're in such a hurry that i can't think of an analogy like okay you're out in outer space and a birthday cake floats by and your line is what is that and because i don't know why we're saying half the time what is that so i'll say give it to me two ways like what is that? Or what is that? Okay, next, mm. you know, on with that. It yeah. would be really nice if we knew more about the games, but mm. I, for one, have never heard anything. I was asked once for Gauntlet, uh, they said, you're going to be part of the whole process. Da, 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 da. Mm. Never happened. Mm. So, mm. you know what yeah. I mean is that so we're looking cold. How um, important is it to sort of to know the genre and know games? Like, are you a video gamer? Do you play video games? Or <laughs> Or do you rely on the directors to kind of show you what the context is? Ah, uh, neither. Right. Uh, <laughs> I have to ask. Sometimes the people who are working with you, let's say on a Skype call or whatever, mm. they don't even know. Mm. You ask them, is this over battle noise? Is this in stealth mode? Uh, do it both ways. <laughs> so you have to make sure that you keep the loud stuff last so you don't wreck somebody's voice. Mm. But oftentimes... The things, the people that are giving it to us, maybe the audio guys, not the producers. You know what I mean? So we're working with somebody that 
doesn't really know the game. Maybe they know a little bit, but we're just working pretty much cold. Mm -hmm. And again, I have to give script writers the credit because a terrible script is hard to make sound good, no matter how good of a voice actor mm -hmm. that you are. So mm -hmm. I really am applauding the people that write good scripts. I remember when I was doing Blood 2 a long time ago, one of my favorite uh, lines of this, I don't know what, what she was, but uh, I think she was kind of a Jamaican huge warrior. And she says, I've got chunks of people like you in my stool. And I thought that was just <laughs> hilarious, you know? Especially in the so, accent as well. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I know. But the point is, when you get some fun stuff like that, you have fun. And a teamwork is really essential. So yeah. if everybody's on a, hey, let's do this, we're going to have fun doing this, and, and we respect our talent, and, you know, nobody is trying to put anybody down or make anybody feel bad, I think it all turns out to be better. And if the teamwork is, is where people know what they're doing, it helps, but oftentimes... We're working cold. Mm -hmm. That's very true, isn't it? And I think it's important to have that playtime, like where you're maybe not in a session. Mm -hmm. Do you set aside a time to, to, or I mean, I guess you probably don't these days, but did you to start with, you lock yourself in a room and be like, I'm going to come up with 10 different voices or something like that, set yourself challenges? No. <laughs> I have to say no. Um, because again, it's usually a surprise. When we get yeah. our auditions in the inbox, we never know what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And if it is for games, more likely I'm called lately I'm going to say now in my career, I'm called up, let's say by Blizzard. I don't know for what. Mm -hmm. I'll show up and they'll hand me the script. Okay, we've got three different characters. Sometimes you don't even see a picture. Mm -hmm. They're nice enough to pull a picture up when you're, got, when you're in front of the mic. Mm -hmm. And you're going, okay, okay. And, you know, and so it's kind of a um, very spontaneous thing, which was why maybe as a good training, theater helps because you can project, you can be bigger. You know what I mean? Then on screen, you can use gestures when you're doing theater drama mm. uh, and improv could be good. So you're mm. quick on your feet. Those yeah. two things might very much help. Fair enough. What, what kind of um, in, top, in terms of coming up with different voices and being able to sort of, you know, carry that direction? What are some of the levers that you can pull? Because I know with my, 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 my voice, you know, I've got the deeper register down here and I've got my normal talking voice and then I've got kind of a higher voice up here as well um, and things mm -hmm. like to making those sound natural but then there's also like the raggedy old tone and then like young tones I noticed that you've got lots of different levers that you can pull in terms of accent, pitch, <laughs> raspiness what are some of the, the levers This that is you what have? we have to do and this is when I'm coaching people I will tell them you've got your pitch, your textures and your accent mm -hmm. I mean that's the easiest way to of course you've got attitude and all that kind of stuff but you know, when you go to a Kung Fu class, you learn your katas. And I kind of made this up as a coaching thing where you're going, huh, 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 you know, and you're hitting things. Um, but you have from below your belly button. Huh. And if you want a deeper voice, by putting your, your lips forward, huh, you create more of an uh, inverted chest. So you make yourself into a bass fiddle, you know, and, and so. Huh, 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 huh. So it's, it's, it's formulating not only your body to cave in your chest to be deeper, but also if you put your lips forward, it places the voice in the back of the throat, which is a great way to get a British accent, mm. by the way. Mm, <laughs> call, me, call me in the morning, right? Yeah, that's how I tell people to do that, to get into it, because it's not, it's not call me in the morning. It's call me. Not that mm. British people talk like that. That's a good way to get into it. You know yeah, I mean? exactly. So you've got that. And then the texture stuff is I tell people, find sandpaper like Clint Eastwood or Zombie, you do. You can start out with a, a loud whisper. I see dead people. Now add a little bit more. Now go ahead, meet my day. Then I'll ask, if I were to ask you, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Go on. Okay. I want you to be a general. Think Patton. Okay, Patton. Or George C. Scott or a tough general with a gravelly, I'm going to use that term, gravelly voice with a lot of rumbly texture. OK, and I want you to say and bite your consonants, which means, you know, you hit them hard. Get that ammo over here now. OK. Get that ammo over here now. Nice, nice. Now I'd like you to try. Have you ever played with trucks or gone <clears throat> or tried to growl like a dog? You have to flap your cords a little bit more, make more air because your mm. voice is like a carburetor, a mix mm. of air and voice mm -mm. so if you went and try can you try it Rrr. get that ammo to me over now <laughs> except the word you, you got it but see you can also know that's great because you can lead into it you can go get that ammo you know what i mean mm -hmm. you can lead mm -hmm. in 
to do yeah. that kind of thing. And that gives you another voice, yeah. you know, that you, yeah. you could also do it up here. You'll be a dwarf, you know, you could do yeah. all that kind of thing. So that's yeah. the different levers, as you call them, that you can do is to get the pitch. And now if you're going to be a dwarf, maybe you can give them a, another accent. I had a funny story. I told you that Wizards of the Coast that, that does uh, magic and Neverwinter, which I do the casting for, uh, Neverwinter, we were thinking the dwarves would be Scottish. So yeah, exactly. give them a Scot- you know, the elves are going to be British and the dwarves are going to be <laughs> Scottish, right? And to help differentiate between all these races. And so well, we gave them you know, a Scottish accent or whatever you're going to do. And then they came back and said, Scotland wasn't invented yet. They can't have <laughs> Scottish accents. Wait, wait a minute. Britain was invented, but Scotland wasn't invented? I don't know my history that well, but it was one of those hooky moments. But yeah, so also... If you're doing accents or dialects, if you have a phrase that can get you into the right thing, it helps to learn either maybe some, maybe some of the language, if it's a foreign language, you can, you know, como esta, and then you've got a little bit more of that kind of a thing. But for Asian, I always use the most honorable person. So you put in phrases, most honorable person, like three yeah. words. Yeah. And the fact that British dropped their ERs like after, over, under. It's the same way, but mm. you're not in the back of the throat. Mm. So mm. instead of saying, you know, I'd love the chance to dance, I love that chance to dance or two. I, I love the, there we go. Um, you can talk like British, but you make phrase over, under, after, mm. not over, under, after. And I mm. think I mentioned when I said to you earlier, um, how when I ask people, do you do British? They'll say, oh, I do British accent. And inevitably, a lot of men will pull off Monty Python, you know, and um, <laughs> yeah. Hello, that's not what I know. Or they think yeah. that Cockney and people who don't know where Cockney really originated from. Mm. Cockney is not what American theater has turned Cockney. What's up? How are you? You know, it's, <laughs> Hello, Mary Poppins. <laughs> I know. It's, it's, it's actually a rhyming language like apples yeah. and pears mean oh, yeah. stairs. Mm. You know, so the point is that usually RP received pronunciation. Mm. Patrick Stewart. John Luke Picard. That's the uh, thing. But the uh, mistake that a lot of people think is that British always sound pompous and aloof. Mm. They don't. Mm. They don't have to. Just you know. Trope, so you it? just have to, to know a little bit more about that. Mm. Um, and like I said, the David Attenborough, if you're doing voices that sound like you're really interested in what you're talking. Mm. And there again, we go to the script issue. If you have C-spot run, C-spot run. You know, but mm. many times you have to ask is this quick? How, how many seconds do we have? Well, this is in game. This is a shout out. This is during battle. So you have to go, she's about run. Mm, so mm. all those things are things which a voice talent should ask if they're not getting the directing back. Mm. Is this stealth? Is this over battle? Um, how quick do you need this? You know, mm. those are questions because it, there's nothing worse than a bad director, except mm. for a bad script. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great quote. I like that. Um, so with accents, because it's something that I somewhat mm-hmm. specialize in, in terms of like there, there's a difference between doing authentic accents, as in you can fool a native, and then there's like kind of stereotypical trope-based sort mm-hmm. of accents, like you say. Yeah. Um, have you, like, how do you go about, do, do you just learn languages, um, sorry, accents by osmosis? Do you just listen to it and kind of, and follow the stereotypical form, or do you go hang out with people who have that accent, perhaps? (laughs) During this COVID time, it's hard to hang out with people. But I will tell you an interesting thing about that. I I listen a lot to maybe actors on screen, okay? Uh, Game of Thrones, whatever. I'm not intentionally trying to listen, but if it's Scottish, I will listen to somebody. Now, you know, Glaswegian and Edinburgh are two different accents, Mm -hmm. right? You want the one that is the most intelligible mm. and the most pulled back because everyone's afraid of offending somebody. Mm. You know, uh, you might be afraid of offending the real Brit, but I can tell you honestly, no two Brits think that each other's accent's worth a shite. <laughs> I've been in England. I've recorded in England. I was, you know, doing this game and I recorded in Southampton and then I was brought up to London and they would say, okay, this is a ring cycle game for Cygnosis, and it was not very good, but they were saying, we want this to be a cross between Manchester and Liverpool. Wow. And I'd go, well, Manchester's kind of more, you know, and Liverpool's like John Lennon. (laughs) 
And I say, how do you expect to cross that? And they go, well, if we could do that, we'd be doing it ourselves now, wouldn't we? <laughs> you know, so oftentimes, you know, wow. it's, it's again, for most games, I, I think that you don't have to find the real person mm -hmm. because, uh, but here's, here's a little tip for people who are BIPOC, which is black indigenous people of color or binary or trans or whatever that now, now everybody's asking for the complete ethnic, mm. you know, stew. Mm. They're open mm. to all ethnicities. This is what you're going to see in auditions a lot, open to all ethnicities, blah, 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 blah. Well, I would say start taking theater, start taking drama if you belong to one of those. Okay. Mm. Because you would be a big fish in a small pond. Mm. Uh, oftentimes people who are of a native thing, are not voice actors, you know what I mean? Or if they're getting into voice acting, they might have not have done characters because when you're doing localization, a lot of those localization companies have native speakers that know how to do voice work, but they're doing medical transcription or they're doing some sort of educational or, or online, whatever it is, and not games, mm -hmm. not animation, things of that nature. So when it comes into looking, always listen when you're around people, listen to them, you know, try and, and pick up different, uh, things that you can watch TV. People told me once, I, I know another guy that does coaching and he said, I always tell people to go to a radio station online for that country. I got to put this person down without telling them their name. And he says, and for example, I'm going to play you something here. Now I've taken German and Spanish and French, but he's, he's playing this radio station. I'm not going to be able to say it all in German because I'm not that fluent in German, but you could say, but fast you can do I could you say, I Okay, now did you hear that part? I'm gonna play that part for you. Da -da, da -da, da -da. And so and now I'm gonna let you hear something from some guys that are not really German, but they're gonna do give you the good German accent. I really don't like your band. I hate the music. I hate everything you're doing. Well, nobody wants Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Especially you have to kind of know something culturally that Germans kind of look down on Austrians, just like Japanese may look down on Koreans and it has to do with history and stuff like that. So you want to be as nondescript, non-regional as possible, sometimes for that reason, political reason mm -hmm. and things of that nature. So you do have to listen, but, and you can listen to people talk, but the style too of acting, German actors, they kind of deliver everything like a machine gun. And because I've gotten the German lines from a game from the actors. Mm -hmm. And here's what we did. And they will assign one actor nine roles, and they all sound exactly the same, but they said they're not together. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to care if they sound, sound right. the same. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's not how I do it, but mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing is that uh, also Japanese, when you're looping or doing stuff over Japanese, usually stereotypically, anime may have girls that, oh, Sonica, what the you know, more of a high chip monkey kind of thing. And the guys, uh, or they could be very kind of boring, you know, but it's a cultural mm, thing. Mm, so mm. you have to respect the culture and uh, looping is something that some people get into. It's more difficult, mm, but it mm. is a different mindset. You can be a big star mm. and do ADR, you know, yeah, but yeah you're not coming up with as many original voices and the ability to do timing on your own because mm, mm. you're matching the timing of the lip flap. You know mm. what I mean? So mm. it's a more constricted um, thing, but you can be a big star in that field, but mm. it's kind of like, in my opinion, and no offense, animate people and looping people, but it's kind of like the wannabe DJ that is a traffic reporter. You know what I mean? It's just mm. a different different mm. application of yep. the voice. Mm. I'm not saying traffic recorders are not important, but it's a different set of, you're not able to be as creative because you're limited within that time space to mm. match the, yeah, you know, very the animation. True. Coming back to the, um, to, to sort of, you know, imitating um, foreign voices and, um, mm. you know, trying to inhabit the skin of others and being like an, an actor. Cause I, one of the things I've, I've, I've been thinking about the last, especially well, especially the last year. What with um, with the kind of uh, with Black Lives Matter and and lots of mm -hmm. issues being highlighted around um, authenticity and um, and privilege and that kind of thing. Like one of the things I've struggled with as someone who does accents and and does imitations is like when does it become socially unacceptable now? Because I feel like the ground has shifted in terms of being an actor because. You know, you're uh, if you're if you're imitating someone and it's meant to be funny, then that can seem like it's kind of mean. 
So, I mean, have you ever come across those those issues yet, or are you are you is your awareness heightened around those kind of things? I think it's probably like you're saying about in the last year mm. or so that mm. the attention is being given to not even allow us who could do a respectable accent, you mm. know, and be believed by the big people to saying we need to give the opportunities mm. to the people of color. Mm. And then there you have a lot of people in the Caucasian world saying, I'm not even going to touch that. Mm. I want the job to go to the right people. Mm. Now, again, right, in my opinion, would be who sounds the best and does mm. the best work. Mm. Uh, but giving all the people the chances who are of that ethnicity, mm. sure, you know. Mm. But in my opinion, again, if those people aren't giving, you know, you can go way out of your way to try and find just to fit that bill mm. where you may have someone that fits it right then and there. So mm. I think you have to have a little bit of leeway, but you're right. It's getting really the it's political a correctness. And yeah. Thing. It's, yeah. And I mean, for me, like I've kind of made the decision where it comes down to intention. If it's like, if, if you're like, if, if it's anything to do with making fun of anyone because of their accent or whatever, then it's totally off the cards. But like you say, if you're doing a genuine performance of, of, of someone good and you you know you're not kind of like just, they're not just coming to you because you're of a certain ethnicity, then, yeah. you know, maybe they're, you audition like kind of with those notes. But it is, it's a, it's, it is, it's a bit of a minefield. It's a challenging sort of world, isn't it? Especially as I was told you before that the oftentimes black people, and there's not many games that normally have gangbang stuff anymore, but there used to be. Mm. You know, you got to be talking like you're, you're from the, the ghetto. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, and versus the Hispanic, oh, hey, orale, what you doing, man? There have been games like that. Mm. But a lot of the black actors, some of them that I've tried, they take offense when I'd say, can you sound a little more ethnic, please? Right. Mm. Uh, because they're trying to sound like I went to drama school and they don't right. sound black at all, you know? Mm. So mm. Uh, there has been that uh, challenge of, Mm. You know, when you when I'm asking people, they yeah. wanted you to sound black and you don't. Right. That's, you, that's, did yeah, you try? It's, it's stereotypes, <laughs> isn't it? Because stereotypes yeah. are they, they're things that we they're like uh, cultural hooks that we that we recognize, and it's it, for, right. for an actor, it's like, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on that hook, but then right. like the political correctness has meant that well, we don't want to stereotype people. People can be whatever they want, but you still you still got there's a tension there, isn't there, between you know what people will recognize right. and what's actually being sort of you know racist or offensive. It's, well, it's have you noticed that with your accent? That you know the uh, when I was at E3 a trade show, I was down in the lobby once, and I was listening to people that were from Australia, and they were from a game company. And I, I'm sure you know this, but a lot of people don't. That if you sound like Crocodile Dundee, <laughs> it's kind of like the Cockney version of English, isn't it? Mm, and, exactly. you know, but you know, okay. good eye, mate. You know, yeah, whatever. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and you might be able to do it like Steakhouse or something like that. But um, in general, I said, you guys don't sound Australian at all. <laughs> And they looked at me and they go, what do you think Australian sounds like? And they say, that's because we're educated. <laughs> you know, like, okay. Uh, so I have, a, um, I think, South African, I think your, your accent, if it's, you know, Kiwi. Yeah, Kiwi. Um, yeah. I think it's, it's wonderful. And there should be more of a, of a call for that because it's exotic. Mm. And it's not, you know, good eye, my, it's, it's not offensive. It's not that kind of a thing. Mm. But even South African, which mm. is a little bit more, a, a, a cross between British and you know uh, mm. Australian or mm. Kiwi Pinch has an exoticness about it. It's yeah. it's not all posh and hello, you know, mm. are you being served that kind of thing. But it's got a a, a lovely like wow, I can't identify that, but it, mm. I sure like it. It's a it's a lovely accent. So mm. I congratulate, mm. and I think that more people should be looking. At, you know the trouble. Oh, I think the trouble is a lot of people who write for these parts don't know about any of the cultures they don't know what people can sound like and they don't if they did uh and i have had some weird requests um <laughs> like we want to cross between peter laurie and daffy duck <laughs> we want to cross between uh peg uh, bud bundy from mary with children and dean kane from superman <laughs> uh you know they give you these weird things that is a, an abomination that you're going okay i want to cross a rabbit with a jeep <laughs> For Gauntlet, they wanted they wanted these uh, this certain race that looked like zombies with skulls hanging all over them, but they were supposed to be smart astrologers. They wanted a cross between ancient Peruvian and Celtic, <laughs> or oh, if we can't get Celtic, we'll do Welsh. Well, the, the farther north you get from England, the more of a lilt you have. 
I like to play rugby and all. And can you imagine these zombie looking things, these big bestial guys? I want to play rugby and all, you know, that kind of thing. So I think it's the problem that we have of the designers hmm. and the people that are making up some of these things that we could have so much more fun and so much more of the ability to use Kiwi accents and, hmm. and Australian accents if they knew, A, that they could find the people that hmm. they're out there, like yourself, right? Hmm. And B, that it would make it a lot more interesting instead of, Here's your, I think the most called for accents are British, Russian, mm, maybe the Houston for the, sir, yes, sir, the soldier, mm. you know, kind of mm. thing. Everything else, if you want to be a Scandinavian warrior or a Valkyrie, maybe, uh, you would stand out if you could do a Nigerian or a Kenya accent, mm. you know, Jambo, Habari, you know, mm. that kind of Missouri Sana, that kind of a thing. Mm. But in general, the writers aren't writing Mm. It is. Yeah, it's true. Going they back to um, Strange Directions, um, I think you've just inspired yeah. me to come up with an annual award for the strangest direction. <laughs> yes. I think there have been some strange things like that. Um, uh, the, the, the combination plate of yeah. make it a combo. And I would say, I have said, that's like trying to cross a rabbit with a Jeep. Mm. Mm. You know, it just, it doesn't make logical sense. It's like a musician getting told, can you make your music a little more plaid with salsa? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, typically, and musicians go through this too. Mm, mm. Um. So, like, you must have because you sort of specialize, or you you have come to specialize in kind of alien noises, um, like <laughs> like strange kind of sounds. Um. Do you have to know what like animals sound like? Do you study kind of like what animals sound like, or is it just purely? It's just... not animals because when we do our things, like when I was working for Starcraft Two, and we were doing Zerg and the Zerg Queen, mm. um. We don't know what she was going to sound like, but I was doing all these weird things. And then they would take you as one thirty second of the sound file and add lions, tigers, and bears. Right. So that's what a sound designer will try and take your really unique thing. Like, why? If I, this is flapping my cords, I am not doing a, a growl. You know what I mean? Ja. This sounds really good if it's pitched down. But I was Silitha and um, uh, Tiam, Tiamak, whatever. Uh, for uh, dark siders, mm. and one's this giant creature with wings, you know, and then Silitha was a spider, and I fully expected them to put sound effects on it. They didn't. Mm. They left it just as it was. I'm like, mm. Sam, I help, but your loyalty, because if you are a sailor rider, perhaps we can strike a deal. You won't like my terms. Okay, so you never know when you're doing a creature thing whether you're going to have a really creative sound designer that's going to layer you with so much you can't even understand what it is you're saying. But it does help. You will have games that require you to sound like an animal. Mm. And sometimes they will provide you with a link to YouTube for the animal noise mm. but you'd be surprised that if you're going to be a, a lamb versus a or a sheep versus a goat mm. i don't think they really want the real things because yeah right. lambs and sheep sound like they're in paint you know that kind of thing <laughs> instead of like <laughs> instead of you know so, i'm being killed so but, so they, but they also yeah, but they the also want you to, they want you to to convey human emotions in those mm. animal voices, and that's one of the toughest jobs you can do is say, now we want you to imply that you're, that uh, you want someone to come over and pet you. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> that kind of thing. But it also helps when you're doing animal things like, like birds, like mm. oh, mm. to make kind of a beaky mm. face, mm. you know, mm. to talk through a, a more of a, a frontal beak. Mm. And if you're going to do, to get to get the facial the emotional physical thing of mm. the animal really does help you know mm. so to kind of look act get mm. your face like it and this is another thing when you're getting into different character voices is to go in the mirror talk mm. from a funny face mm. do it you know, thirst and hell, you know that kind of a thing so you can at least know how to change your voice so if you may put that in your so-called library and say okay i can do yogi bear hey, hey, hey. you know mm. but they won't want you to keep there, but maybe you can make this for another voice and say, no, I'm using this kind of a thing for another character. Mm, you know what I mean? Mm. So you can have a, people have done that where they make little 
recordings and have their own little libraries mm. and things of that nature. And then they can go back and pull on their Sylvester Stallone or whatever mm. they can mm. do. Like it's but, breakfast, if, yeah. but conversely, if you're asked to do a Scottish accent and all you can do is Sean Connery, I've had that happen. Okay, but I'll shut him on the chair. You know what I mean? So it, you can't just be a Sean Connery doing a Scottish accent. You mm. have to be able to apply it toward other mm. sounds and not just. Do you use voice. mnemonics to, to keep track of how many voices and get back into those those characters? Explain. Uh, as in, um, like for accents, for example, you like for a, a say. Um, uh, I, Irish, you have like hoity toity for liddy potato, and certainly oh, in the Irish accent, yeah. da, da, da. like so the little set pieces that just get you back into that vowel set and that face shape. And I wish that. I had them. That's a very good idea to have. You know, yeah. I will tell people that they call me in the morning, over, under, after. I'd love the chance to dance with you. The British thing. Mm. I don't do it myself because I kind of, you know, got it already. But mm. um, the hoity toity, the, the Irish thing is harder for me to do the oi, the oi, mm. you know, that mm. kind of thing. And they're more in the front of the mouth, aren't they? You know, yeah. they have a more of a lilty kind of a thing. But um, the other accent I won't do is French Canadian or uh, Cajun. All oh, right, you know, all of all the top brulee. I mean, because it's kind of like an aberration of French. But yeah, I, right. I just um, say no, I, I don't do that one. You know, yeah, but yeah. what voice, what accents won't you do? That's a good question. I won't do accents when it calls for an authentic accent. Like I, I've got, like I've got three tiers of accent. I've got like I can do this and fill the local. Uh, I've got like this is a good party accent, and it'll fool like a lot of people, especially slightly drunk people. And then like <laughs> the third one is just like I just don't even know where to start. Um, and that list, that last list is getting fewer and fewer because I like to like mm-hmm. when I come across one of those speakers. Like um my my thing I got obsessed with. I listened to um uh what's his name the 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 Daily Show the new guy um, Noah. Trevor Noah's Trevor, Trevor um, Noah. his book, mm-hmm. um, a, and it's brilliant. Oh. It talks about his his whole past, and he is amazing with African accents. He can just and he in this book, his yes. audio book, he goes through and he reads all these different wow. things that happened to him in these different African accents. And after that, I got a little bit obsessed with African accents, and I yes. um I I just went uh, went around trying to to find what the essence of the accent was. And I know that's not that's that's completely unrehearsed. No, but it's that's like, wonderful. It's finding these blunt like consonants yeah. and and like mm-hmm. really. The way it talked like this, and and when you hear someone doing it authentically, you suddenly like when you do it in just normal life, you kind of think like, oh, is this is this a bit like is this, is this a bit racist? I feel a bit funny about doing doing like especially accents like that. But then you think I'm just talking in a different way. Like this is just for me. I just want to explore yes. how this feels in right. my mouth, and I, I think it and helps that's good to have. Accents. Mm. Well, because not a lot of people can do the African accent, and I mm. know that there's a difference between Nigeria and Kenya and things of that nature, but. Mm. I will tell you when I was working for, I think it was Diablo three, mm. there was a witch doctor mm. and I was cast for the barbarian and the witch doctor. And I didn't, I ended up being released, but it was really a strange situation. I'll make it short. Um, the witch doctor, I kind of made it a, a combination, almost like the pirates of the Caribbean, you know, mm. the, the voodoo priestess. I wasn't trying to make it so African, you know, mm. whatever I was, you know, and the one line was supposed to be, they asked you, how do you know he was lying? He admitted it to me right after I killed his minions. Okay. So I would say that. And then she'd say, she'd go through and, and have me go back and she'd play me my, my part already that I'd done to stay in character. And I wasn't dropping out of character. So. I was getting a little bit weirded out. But then she says, at the very end, she goes, can we play the male sorcerer, the witch doctor? I swear to God. It's one of those guys who cannot talk English at all. You know, he's going, okay, because he, he admitted to me after I killed his minions. I said, I can talk like that. You want me to talk like someone who does not speak English that way? She said, never mind. I got fired on the way home. You know, and it was not because, I don't know. And then I heard later what, was the chosen voice and mm. hardly had any accent at all. Oh, so gosh. I'm saying there it is mm. that you should really epitomize on what mm. you're doing, but to they're going to make you pull it back mm. and mm. pull it back mm. and pull it mm. back because I was hired to do the um, World of Avatar Disney promo. Mm. Mm. They thought I was Caribbean. Mm-hmm. And it was like, come, the mystical mountains and a magical river. The floating mountains and navigate a mystical river. Welcome to our world. And then they found out I wasn't. And uh, so it was, it was one of those things like they liked it. They still wanted it. Mm. And would you believe we did the whole thing and it was just marvelous. I had a great time. And at the tagline, it was like, now open at, the, at Disney World Resort. They wanted that 
the same voice but no accent. The world of Avatar only at the Walt Disney World Resort. Isn't that proof that I was faking the other one? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, that's true. It breaks the it breaks the spell. What's going on? I know. So I would never be afraid if you are not of the right color. Try it anyway. I've asked mm. my agents, by the way, when it says we're looking for, you know, mm. actual this ethnicity. I would mm. say, do you want me to do it mm. Mm. or not? Mm. You know, I will ask permission. Do you want me to do it? And they'll say, we're not going to find the real one. Do it. Mm. Mm. Or they might say, yeah, we want the real thing. Mm. Uh, just That's like good... when they're asking for kids. Mm. Uh, kids, bless their hearts, can be a special thing to deal with. Um, and I'll leave it at that. But <laughs> put it this way, if a kid's, like we had this happen with Tales for Sonic, where all of before that, say kid, I wish you used women. Hey, Sonic! You know, to do the kid's voice. And you could, we're better, not, well, we're easier to mm. direct. You know what I mean? Usually yeah, yeah. we are faster, things of this nature. But they decided that this time they wanted real kids. Mm. Well, we went through three kids because they each reached pu- puberty. Right. Yeah, of course. That's so the we thing, had to it? use the, the guy's frame. brother. Yeah, yeah, I know. Mm. And so that's the other thing, too, is that when people who are saying, um, I have a kid to get, OK, fine, get the kid in the business now. And But if you are hiring a real kid, realize that can happen. Mm. depending on if you have sequels and things of that nature that 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 can be a, an issue but uh the fact that there are real kids and disney wants kids yeah. you know they want the real thing yeah uh, just like they want celebrities yeah. but imagine, imagine if bart simpson was voiced by an actual kid originally it would have been like two seasons and no way did i know <laughs> and that's pretty much her natural she has much of that natural voice mm. Yeah. And Andrea Romano discovered her, I guess, listening to her at some place yeah. and said, you're on. Did you hear how SpongeBob SquarePants got his? his no, his, I haven't heard that story, no. He was speaking at the convention center here um, at Common Con. Mm. And you'll have to excuse my language because I'm going to swear. Is that okay? Because right. I'm going to quote. I'm going to quote what he said. I can, sure. I can kind of alter it a little if you want. But no, no, go for it. It's more funny listening to him swear. He was uh, on camera doing a green screen uh, I think it was insurance commercials or something of that nature. And they had a break and he went down the hall and there was a Christmas commercial being filmed with elves, small people, you know? Uh, mm. And there was one very irate one saying, God damn it. If they ever cast me as a motherfucking elf again, I'm going to kick somebody in the nuts. <laughs> now he was telling this story at a Hollywood party. Mm. Someone tapped him on the shoulder and said, come into my office tomorrow. I think I have a part for you. Mm. And that's how he got to be smart. Oh, gosh, that's amazing. So that's another thing about being in the right place at the right time. Yeah. Unfortunately, sometimes it's who you know, who you, you know. Yeah. Um, but still. I'm saying it's still, <laughs> yes. And um, so it's people say, well, how do you break into the business? Mm. It's a lot of serendipity. Mm. It's a lot of who you know. It's a lot of being recommended mm. by people that are in the business sometimes it's a paid audition where people pay to get a class from a casting director and you better make it an active one because sometimes in this business those who can do and those who can't teach Mm. so Mm. uh that is a paid audition to be seen yeah yeah and i I like that uh, adage that luck favors the prepared (laughs) <laughs> um, you know, in terms of you've got to be ready because that luck train comes along occasionally. And if you're ready, it'll yeah. pick you up. But if you're not ready, it's just going to yeah. go right by. That's true. Mm. Very true. Mm. So well, I think you've done a marvelous job, and especially when you're coaching people and everything. And, and I congratulate you. And I'm oh, going to probably you. ask for your coaching. <laughs> no. <laughs> Stop it. Sure. Um, just before we wrap up today, I wanted to cover like a couple of things because one of the things I've, I mean, I've only dipped my toe into the kind of like the character and video game world. And it's, it's, I've realized that it is such a different world to the commercial voiceover that you have to learn everything again. Um, one of the things I really struggle with in these sessions um, is, well, there's two things. There's exertion scripts which you'll ah. be very familiar with because, you know, yes. they're exhausting and, and last for days. Um, well, let's talk about exertion scripts and then we'll go into the next topic. So what's your sort of, how do you go about, because I just figured they, they were like, right, okay, now you're climbing a rope. Can you do that for 20 seconds? So you're like, huh, 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 and then like, you're, now you're jumping on a table. Huh, and they all ended up sounding kind of the same, all like sex noises. Like, <laughs> how do you go about <laughs> <laughs> What's your strategy? Uh, let's just talk about, generic and this could be different i think that a lot of guys sound like gorillas going through the forest when they're doing attacks like 
First strategy is always use your body. And since I'm holding this phone, excuse me for all the movement that I've had in here, mm. but you've got to use, you've got to use, bah! you know what I mean? Mm. You've got to use your body to do the attacks. And in general, attacks would be consonants or the r, the g, the h, sh, h, and that the being attack would be the and I've been directed, okay, now you're hitting the eye, now you're hitting the throat, now you're hitting the gut, you know. So you can do your, or I can make them juicy, you know, that kind of a thing. That, But nowadays they don't have action specifics. So you're not being throat slit, head bashed, jumping into hot lava. You are light, medium, heavy, light, medium, heavy. And your death, you have to ask, are you showing the cause of your death in your death? And how mm. long do we have to die? Because only very few have allowed you to be hit, fall to your knees, and do a face plant. Mm. Most of them are like, ah! you know, like mm. one second or two mm. seconds. Because the fact is, most of these people that die are respawned and they come back immediately. And I'm going to sound like I, I'm a gamer, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> but the, the fact is that uh, to do some weird things like the jump, bring your arms up. Now, you ask them, do you want the land? So the, it's the same thing as trying to ask people to do a natural laugh, you know, to go, ha, 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 ha. No. If you would do the spit take or something to release most of your air first, <laughs> that little leftover makes it sound much more natural than, ha, 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 ha. You know, you don't want to have that full thing. So you can do the, <laughs> you have the two-stage attack where you're maybe, you know, winding up. Mm -hmm. huh? ah! that kind of deal but when they're telling you that you're jumping over a log and somersaulting on the ground you're going oh um <laughs> you know you have to be prepared to be asked some strange thing but in general it's just the maybe the jump land the rope climb and the breathing yo oh boy you can get hyperventilated really nicely when they're saying doing your breathing i always say do you want it so you can loop it so you might do three breaths like <sighs> But doing similarly, not mm. <laughs> because mm. then it would sound stupid going, <laughs> you know, and then you're mm. doing the more out of breath ones, you know, like, <laughs> but mm. you, you ask them that because mm. you can really get hyperventilated and start getting dizzy doing the breath. But that is one of the emotes that you'll probably be asked for is mm. the, the breathing. Yeah, and absolutely. you could do a fall and you mm. have to ask how far do you fall? <laughs> <laughs> I always want to go away from the mic and fall away. And they go, nope, nope. Be like right there. You got to be like with your, your face right in front of the ah! How long do you want it? Ah! You know? <laughs> so they want to be able to cut it usually. And yeah. you don't do the thump as you, <laughs> as you land <laughs> kind of a thing. But yeah, I think uh, also use your body a lot uh mm. when you're doing that and imagine that it hurts also mm. you're going to be asked to talk in pain wounded the mm. wounded sound mm. my funny direction is pinch a loaf <laughs> oh i can't i'm trying to pinch a loaf and i'm hurting but you know i'm constipated and that's one way to think of it to be sounding like you're in pain right. or uh, when you take kind of a in between your breathing Mm -hmm. And sounding like, mm -hmm. like like you're you're gasping for air, you know. So yeah, those are yeah. little tricks that Gosh, you can it's, use for. It's fantastic advice. It's, it's really good. Another one, another big big advice, because this is another thing I struggle with in these sessions is <clears throat> doing screams, doing falls, doing deaths. Exactly, it's hard on your voice. Like doing yeah, that for so you like, do those I've, last. What's that? Yeah, you I do, do the last, last exactly. But like, I, I have you. Like, what's your strategy for maintaining voice health? Do you have warning signs where you're like, no, I've got to stop now, otherwise I'm going to lose my voice? Or you just go through I always it? tell people, if you don't, if you're not willing or wanting to ruin your voice, stay out of the game industry. <laughs> mm. No, it's mm. because um, sometimes they will, and I don't see it lately, because some games like I cast don't even have the emotes. But mm. sometimes they will say, this will require physical exertion. Do not accept this audition if you're not willing to do it. In other mm. words, if you're not willing to kill yourself, stay out of the oven. We're going to rinse you. So mm. the, the trick is that you will always, depending on now, some people can be really snippy and say, I'll only give you three. I'll only give you one. You know, you can do that and limit yourself. But then what happens after I got through doing Sindel for Mortal Kombat? They had me do Shiva. And then 
I said, wait a minute, aren't we doing her emotes? Oh, you can do emotes in a different voice? <laughs> well, yeah. Real, this is from a top, mm-hmm. it was like Technicolor Studios in LA, which they're not around now, but they were one of the biggest. Mm-hmm. And I said, nobody's ever done that before. Oh my God. I, I was a superstar because I could emote in a different you know, mm-hmm. voice, which is hard for a lot of people to do. But um, I'd say that the hardest thing, the screams are not as hard as the, ah, this, when you're flapping your voice and you're doing things like that. Uh, that, that, or, or the oinks of the pig, or, those kind of things. Mm. Or the, the clicker wasn't so hard. Uh, that's not really hard, but or, uh, those kind of things where you're tightening up the throat. Mm. I've had it so that I couldn't drink water. I mean, they'll give you the honey and the tea and everything else that you, the throat spray and whatever. Mm. When you're tight, you're tight and you're kind of mm. done. If you can ask for maybe 10 minutes, 15 mm. minutes, you may have your throat unswell a little bit. It might not. Wow. You know, so yeah. you just have to be prepared and be prepared that maybe the next day you're not going to be able to audition for much. Mm. Yeah, that's tough, isn't it? Like, that's definitely the thing that I've, I've struggled with most is that, uh, yeah, it takes me out for, for, for a day afterwards. So it changes my yeah. fundamental voice, my normal speaking voice for the commercial. Of stuff, course. Right? Yeah, so definitely. Uh, and then so you ask to do everything last, including if it's difficult for you to do a deep voice. Mm. You don't want to strain yourself doing your higher voice and all the emotes first because as you need the loose mm. chords mm. to do the deep voice. Mm. So y- you might notice that if, you are, if you've been screaming in your higher voice, it's going to tighten up your throat so you can't mm. get down into your resonant voice as quickly. Mm. So you want to do your deep voice stuff first and mm. then your scream ah! and those kind of stuff you would do last. Otherwise, you, you're going to sound kind of like this. I'm Joan Rivers. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so you're going to actually have this, this sound of being very, uh, I know you probably had it when you, when you have a voice that you're out of your voice and you sound mm. to sound like this. Mm. Uh, mm. That's what's going to happen. When you ruin your voice, you're going to sound basically like this. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> um, so, like, and finally, like, how do you keep, you've been doing this for such a long time. Um, you obviously don't get bored of it. You're still, how do you keep enthusiastic about it? Do you, do you have those days when you're like, oh, maybe I should get a different job or you are still like 100%. No. I love this. Well, because you work with all these different people mm. and different characters and everything is a new challenge. You always have new characters that come up. So that's the newness of it. And being able to make something better than it could be C spot run. You know what I mean? Mm. You're able to bring new life. It's our job. That's our job. I mean, why are we here? If it's not to bring new life and to find people and give new people opportunities. I do that all the time. Mm. People are always pinging me, you know, I want to be out of dear talent pool, uh, that kind of thing. So we'll give them the whole rundown. I think that's what makes it fun is because it's always a new scenario. Even if I'm doing another Star Trek thing, we will have new characters. We, sure, you'll have your captains and your admirals and whatever, but I love it when there are, especially I love it when there's creatures or what have you, but when you're working with a whole different group of people, that's your family. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And me being pretty much alone, that's, that's enabling me to vicariously live in an outside world and, mm. and uh, not have to play the games to uh, be mm. part of it. Yeah, exactly. Fair enough. <laughs> Well, um, thank you so much for your time today. Um, yeah. Just before, did you still do that? Um, there was that great monologue that you used to do, which started, which started, we all start out as babies. Do oh, you, do yeah. Do you still do that one? Could you perform that one for us? Sure. <clears throat> we all start out as babies. And then as days go by, we get a little older. And we're told we shouldn't cry. We go through school trying to be cool. And then we graduate. Some of us might be mommies. Others work or even date. As we grow old, we wonder, were we smart or just a fool? Now some of us are back in diapers again, and others even drool. Well done. Thank you so much. That's that's Thank one of my you. favorite monologues of all time. It's perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Such a pleasure, and you're such a great interviewer, and I hope we did okay. We did great. Thank you so much. Thank you.